Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're having a good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this video. So I'm making this tier list because yesterday I made a tier list video, or I guess reviewed a tier list, right? From the global side of Grand Cross database, it, it, it was okay. <laughs> it wasn't the best, but um, tier lists are, you know, opinionated so it's not like there's a right or wrong answer but there is you know like this conception that everyone has of certain units where they should be placed etc etc so hopefully you guys don't kill me too much in the comments and i'm i'll try my best to explain my reasoning for putting each unit where i did um i'll just briefly go over some of them i'm not gonna go over every single one of them the video will be over like two hours long if i did or something like that right so i will do my best to explain why i put the units in um their respective categories so yeah let's go ahead and let's just break down these characters into you know why they're here so i guess we'll start off with the ss class right so broken op um pretty much sums up this you know this row right here now when i say like broken op i mean like units that are primarily you know they have one goal and that's to be annoying as possible or just to deal as much damage and kill you as possible right so Escanor, of course, you guys already know. God's Elizabeth, yup. Lost Vein. Now, Lost Vein, I was actually considering putting in S class, but I decided to keep him up here just for now until, um, you know, like a few months down the line to see where he's really placed. I don't really think Lost Vein is much of a problem. Maybe if your characters aren't like, you know, completely built up but otherwise i don't think he's like actually too much of a problem his obviously his ultimate is still a very very big you know deal one of the hardest hitting ultimates in the game if he has a you know six out of six a lot of cards in hand but otherwise and not really that crazy um so yeah that's why i have him up here still red gother he's very very you know good he's still very very good um even though green gother does exist attack ceiling ranking up um you know pretty much they're like they're kind of the same unit but not because green gother just dissolves and that's it that's literally all he does he d what's different is he dissolves and he increases attack related stats of all allies as long as they're all from different races so you guys already know why green gother's up here right so there you go that's why both the gothers are up here we got merlin tarmio and sario pretty you know self-explanatory merlin being a very phenomenal unit um with power strike has an aoe infect so they can't heal she can't take more than 40 percent of her uh you know of damage well i say that but she can't take more than uh 40 of her max hp as damage right so yeah w whatever you guys what i'm saying um tarmiel defensive juggernaut god whatever you want to call him sario straight up dps unit very powerful power strike card and then assault melee assault melee i think should be an ss because he may not like be broken but i think he is pretty damn op with his amplify card if the enemy does in fact hit you it's pretty much ggs um you can really work around the enemy team because if they don't want to hit you you can make that work by rushing his ultimate having you know his ultimate and then another amplify card right next to it very powerful you set up the team with him and the team builds just looking absolutely insane so i think he is deserving of ss class now we'll move down to s class so S class top tier, right? You got Hulk and Oslo, and not many people talk about them because of the fact that they are actually, you know, like they're very, very limited. I yeah, I was trying to find the words, but they're very, very limited. And the fact that they only came to global and JP once and they were literally just on JP. Like they came out when uh the eleventh of March, right? So roughly like two months ago they came out for jp for global they they came out like a, a while back i want to say like almost seven months ago somewhere around there right maybe even more but um yeah they they only been out once so it's insane how rare they are esther rosa um very good full counter unit you got red zelly here i was gonna put red zelders in ss but i actually think he is just s class he uh he's pretty top tier 
so I just put him there. Um, Eleven. Eleven's very good. She's actually very, very good. Um, her damage is insane. What she can do because she has a power strike skill. She automatically increases her own damage by forty percent. So very, very good. Um, Ludo, you guys already know. Fest King, he is very good. I think a lot of people underrate him a lot because of the fact that he may not be as you know like super duper impressive or anything like that but once he's hitting those ridiculous numbers you know critting uh, his ultimate's very strong yeah he's he's good he's good arthur up here as well can't use him in pvp and but in terms of pve he's very strong actually he's like one of the best free-to-play characters in the game i still think he might be the best free-to-play character in the game um but yeah he's still very good very good and then these three right here, these tanks, the trifecta of tanks right here, they're insane. These three are actually very, very powerful. Although they all do kind of have weaknesses in Tarmi or not Tarmi, Sario, Merlin, and Eleven with their power strike skills because each of these units has crazy resistance, right? Derriere and um you know, Dan buff their resistance with their taunt, and then Droll increases resistance on his commandment. So, you know, they are at the mercy of these three units. So it is what it is. But as far as tanks go, they are top tier, man. I don't care. They are top tier. You got Petrify here. You have someone who can literally stop ultimates. You have just a great tank all along, like Trifecta right here. And then Valencia's very good. Valencia's very good. <laughs> nothing else to say about that she's very good um i would say sario is a little bit better than her like a little bit better because of the fact that he has type advantage over her but um if she were like blue it, she easily probably would replace sario but sario's still very good because of his grace as well so keep that in mind right so we move down to a tier the pretty good units now everyone in here i think is deserving of a place here Jim, I actually was debating putting him right next to 11, right? I actually was kind of debating that because of the fact that Jim, his, his like stats are actually pretty okay. Um, his substats, right? His crit chance and crit damage is actually very, really good. And when you pair him with Gother or something like that, he's actually a very good unit. But I did decide overall to keep him here because one, you do kind of need to invest in him to be able to, you know, use him in PvP. Not only that, he is kind of dependent on Gother and Ludocio, and that's kind of bad because of the fact that Ludo does get out CC'd by 18 other units in the game potentially, right? If you're facing them, you have Green Gother that you do kind of need. Actually, you do need him for Jim's uh, attack related stats to go up easily. You need him to also be able to crit, which doesn't happen, uh, you know, if it doesn't happen. Yeah, but he does stun, he can deplete alt gauge, so he is still pretty, pretty good, which is insane because he's a free to play unit, right? And he's he's just good. I don't know what else to say. He's just good. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then we got Demon Hendrickson here. Because Demon Hendrickson is a very good unit. I don't think he's like S tier. But I do think he's a pretty good unit. His passive is very good. Um, He has good debuff skills. So all in all, very good. But everyone else here, pretty self-explanatory as to why they're actually where they are. I mean... Yeah, pretty self-explanatory as to where they are on this, um, you know, in this row. Jericho being a very, very good unit. So, yeah, everyone else pretty self-explanatory. Even Green Demon Melly is actually better than I thought, right? He's actually very better, like, very good. Um, The reason for why he was so low on the tier list before is because of the fact that he released when he released or he released after lost being released on global and then once he came around on jp he was pretty much obsolete so it was like bruh but he's still he's now he's kind of making a renaissance so he, yeah he, he's coming up i see him um but everyone else here is pretty self-explanatory keo uh you know rugal the entire kof batch is still very good raglock Sinia being a pretty decent unit as well so yeah moving down to b this row 
yeah, I don't even know what to say about this row. I mean, it's they they're all pretty useful in their own regard, right? Red Melascula on Assault Melee's team. Um, you know, you got Red Shin. I actually think Red Shin is better. I think he's actually an A tier, but I, pr I probably have to do a little bit more testing until um, I can actually, you know, solidify him at A, a tier, right? Because Green Shin, Green Shin's a phenomenal farming unit. Phenomenal farming unit. Red Shin, because uh, <laughs> he's dependent on debuffs. He's he's not. He literally ranks up his own. Like he literally ranks up everybody's cards in his own cards. If he does attack three times, he increases his attack with its stats. Uh, you know he's very good. He has weak point on his first skill, which is an AOE weak point. So very good. He's dependent on debuffs, which isn't bad. But he does have a single target skill, which isn't good for farming. I don't know. I don't know. I have to do more testing with him. But everyone else here, pretty much self-explanatory as to... They're like, meh slash can be useful. Um, nothing really popping out of the page on this row right here. Um, I think they're all good. I honestly think they're all good where they're at. Because you got Blue Demon Melly, who initially would be A tier, but... Nowadays, people don't really run Pierce for farming because you don't need to invest in some of the units that you can farm with already or invest in as much. With Pierce, it's kind of you need Blue Lilia, you need Blue Demon Meliodas, and you, you don't need Rugal, but if you have him, you're obviously going to run him over Hauser, right? Who's in C class or C tier, right? So, yeah, he's he's... He can still be useful, but he's not like you know as powerful as he once was. He's he's really not as powerful as he once was, right? So everyone else here though, pretty self you know like I said, pretty self-explanatory as to why they're here. Um, they have some sort of gimmick that makes them useful. Um, yeah, what more can I say? That's it. Now we move to C class. So C or C tier. I keep saying C class. C tier. Um, yeah, outdated. Just they're outdated, man. Every unit in this row, kind of just, you're not going to use them or they have replacements. Uh, for example, if we take, uh, let's see, Hauser, perfect example. Hauser was a farming god at the start of this game. He was a farming god. Now you got Blue Demon Melly, Rugal, right? You got Green Shin, even green hendrickson <laughs> you got a uh, potentially even like green demon melee if you really wanted to sariel lost vein green gother instead of blue lilia now right yeah <laughs> he used to be very very powerful um for you know starter players he is good but he's just outdated um red king same thing he is outdated as hell because his only real like reason for even existing in the first place was to counter pierce since no one runs pierce and there's better units in the sub slot now he's he's obsolete like there's no reason to run red king there was a time that i just used to run red king in the fourth slot because of his cc but now units these days have high cc that outdo him and it's like wow he's really not that crazy and um pierce rate yes Pierce rate does have, you know, a calculation with attack, but Pierce rate overall is to go through resistance in the game, right? So that's why Pierce rate is so strong because it goes through resistance um, and, you know, stuff like that. But since no one's running Pierce, it's like, oh, well, okay, well, never mind then. <laughs> like, all right, well, whatever. But yeah, so eh. then we have, uh, let's see, let's see, another example of outdated units, Levi. Levi's perfect, right? Levi's actually a really good example of this. Levi got replaced by Red Shin because Red Shin can crit with just a debuff. He needs to attack the person with the lowest HP threshold in order to crit, which is bad because it's just like if you do more damage on a blue unit, you're going to have to crit that blue unit. Whereas if the green unit has more HP than the blue unit, he's not going to crit the green unit. So it's like, bruh. So he got replaced by... Red Shin, Sario, Lost Vein, um, Green Shin, Demon Hendrix, like, 
it's just insane. It's just absolutely insane. But um, yeah, it's it's crazy. And I know you guys see Mike and Will here. They're kind of like, even though they just came out, they're outdated, man. They're just, they're really not that crazy. Because Will, we thought Will was going to be absolutely powerful. He ended up being pretty, pretty bad. Not going to lie. So it is what it is. But it's just, bro, like, come on now. Mike is as well mike was never really that impressive to me in the first place uh first place his passive is good but you know like gloxinia has what he has as a commandment so <laughs> it's like okay you get a unit with a terrible move set versus a unit with a good unit uh good move set with a commandment and a passive and it's like wow who are you really running you know what i'm saying so yeah Got that going for him. And then, obviously, D tier is just the bottom of the barrel, just trash. Like, the bottom of the barrel, just... Like, they really, really aren't useful for Jack. I, uh, Blue Blue Frauderin's here because he's he's really not that useful either. Um, I mean, yeah, he dies. He fills up the alt gauge. Um, but, eh. <laughs> it's like, eh, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, everyone in this D tier... Really not that crazy or impressive. They're trash, like the bottom of the barrel. Um, there's a few in here that might have potential in the future. But that's it. Um, overall, I think this tier list is pretty good. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I think this tier list is actually really good. Um looking at it, you know, from a viewer's perspective, I think I did pretty good at, you know, putting the units where they're at, um, ex explaining them. I mean, what more can I say, guys? I, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm just sounding like a broken record here. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below of the tier list. Uh, do you think it's pretty good? Do you think it, you know, is bad? Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me see your reasons. I, I know a lot of you sometimes, y'all just be blowing me up with reasons as to why units should be where, um, et cetera, et cetera. So go ahead and let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of the units in their respective places, what you think of the tier list in general. Um, but yeah, go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Also, be sure to subscribe to my second channel. Link will be in the description and or comments below. And as always, I will see you all next time.